So welcome to Manocha Academy's live class on motion. Hope you guys can hear me. Good evening. So yeah, I see a lot of folks are here. Deeptanshu Panda, hi. Srinivas, hi Sudha. Hi Harun Ahmed. Hi Gautam Devnath. So good evening everyone here. Welcome to our live class. So if you just joined in, this is on the topic motion and it's for mainly for class 9 but folks in class 7 and 8 also can attend this class if you have the topic motion in physics. Good evening. And I hope all of you are doing fine and safe. I know we have this lockdown. So uh, everyone I hope is safe at home. And uh, so please do take care of your health. Hi, good evening everyone. And guys, if you haven't checked out my website, it's manochaacademy.com. So do go ahead and check it out. And uh, I have some good news for you. Uh, just yesterday, I launched the Physics CBSE Class 9 full course. So you guys can uh, check it out on the website. And we also have the Physics CBSE Class 10 full course for you. So these courses have uh, special videos where you get interactive questions during the video for you to uh, answer. We have uh, quizzes and questions for you to practice and you'll get replies from me on your doubts. So do go ahead and take a look at these courses on our website. It's manochaacademy.com. Yeah, someone's asking, yeah, these are focused on uh, CBSE, but also can be used for ICSE and state boards because the syllabus are very similar. Uh, so we'll soon be launching some ICSE courses as well. Uh, but the topics, you know, in class nine and 10 across all the boards are very similar. Hi, hello, I see there's someone from Bangladesh. Hi, Arfan. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Mahesh. Hi, Garv. So good evening. All right, so these courses are there for you uh, to check out, uh, check out on our website, manochaacademy.com. And I'll be conducting some more live classes on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button and uh, click on the notification bell so that you get notified about new videos and uh, more live classes that we are conducting, right? So you'll get to know this. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button for this uh, uh, live session right now and do share it out with your friends so that they can watch the live session or if they're not here, they can watch the recorded session later. Hi everyone, good evening. So I see a lot of folks are here. Hi Ajay. Hi Sri Rekha, hi Aditya Singh, hi Rashmi, hi Gautam Devnath. Good evening everyone. Sorry I'm not able to take everyone's name out here. And uh, let's get started with the topic motion. And if you have any doubts, uh, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll uh, try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Alright guys, let's go ahead and start. So in the motion topic, you know that there are two things, right? So either things are at rest or in motion. So let's see if you can identify what things are at rest and motion in the pictures here. So let's start with the first picture. It's a house. So what do you think this house is it in rest or in motion? Hi, good evening, everyone. Somebody is asking, are you a BITS graduate? Yes, I'm from uh, BITS Pilani. That's where I did my electronics and electrical engineering. Uh, quite some time back in Rajasthan, right? So Bitspilani, Rajasthan. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and uh, try this question. Um, this house that you see here, is it in rest or in motion? Very good. People are saying the house is at rest. That's right. Now, what about the car here? So you can see the car is traveling on the road. So the car picture over here, this second picture here. So is the car in rest or in motion? Very good. It's in motion. Right. So clearly a moving car is in motion. Now, what about the tree down here? Is it at rest or in motion? OK, so the tree picture down below, what do you guys think? So is the tree in rest or in motion? Very good. The answer is rest, right? And what about the moon that we see, right? So the moon that you see, uh, is it in rest or in motion? Okay, very good. We know that the moon is in motion because it is revolving around the earth, right? It goes around the earth. So the moon is in motion. Very good. So you can see we can classify things as rest and in motion. 
Now, what is the definition of rest? Okay, let's try to define when do we say an object is rest is at rest. So when the position of an object with respect to others around it does not change, then we say that it is at rest. So here we are talking about that the position of the object does not change, right? With respect to the other objects around it. So let's understand this definition. So for example, if you look at the tree here in this picture of the house, right? So you can see there's this, uh, can you see there's a tree over here in this picture? And there's another far away, there's another tree here also, right? So if you consider the house is at rest with respect to these trees, right? Because the house is not moving. Similarly, if you consider uh, that there's some uh, rock or stone over here, right? Let's say there's some rocks or stones on the ground here. Uh, then the tree is at rest with respect to the rock because if the rock is the observer or if you're considering with respect to the rock, the position of the tree is not changing. So clearly these things are at rest. And how we do, do we define it? With respect to the other objects. There are reference. Okay. Now what will be the definition of motion? So the motion is obviously the opposite of rest. So when the position of an object with respect to the other objects around it changes, then we say the body is in motion. Okay. So for example, in this picture, if you look at this pole here, so can you see there's an electric pole here and the car is moving, right? So first the car was somewhere there and now you can see the car is moving or moving away from the pole. So if we consider the pole as the object, the car is in moving, right? So the position of the car is changing, right? Similarly, if you consider the leaf here in this picture, right? So if you consider this leaf, the bird is flying away from the leaf, right? The position of the bird is changing with respect to the leaf. So when the position changes with respect to objects around it like this leaf or let's say maybe there's another rock or something over here, right? Since the position of the bird is changing, we say the bird is in motion. Okay. By the way, I took this uh, picture of the bird in Odessa. There's a place called Mangla Jodi on the Chilka Lake and you get to see beautiful birds there. So next time when you get a chance to go, uh, once all this lockdown is over, do visit Mangla Jodi. It's a very beautiful place and you'll get to see a lot of uh, nice birds, especially in the winter time. All these migratory birds are there. Okay. So clearly you can see that uh, we can define the uh, rest or motion position uh, based on the position with respect to the other objects. So if the position changes, then it's in motion. And if the position doesn't change, it's at rest. Okay. So I can see there's some uh, confusion about rest or motion. So I'm coming to that, right? Uh, uh, so let's talk about this. So let's say this car is moving, right? Let's say this car is traveling along the road and the car is in, is in motion. It's moving. Okay, let's say it's a moving car. Now the question is, is the boy in the car moving? So can you see this boy sitting here with his mom and dad here, right? So is the boy in the car moving or not? What do you think? So I see somebody saying the boy is moving. Uh, Code forever says boy is not moving. So what do you guys think here? Is the boy in the car in motion or not? So I see yes, no, right? So. Uh, what's going to be the decision here? So let's understand it. If you consider that you're the observer, right? So let's say you are standing outside on the road. So let's say this is you. Okay. So this is you standing on the road and looking at the boy. Then clearly the boy is in motion with respect to you. So here you are the observer. Why? Because obviously the car is moving. So the boy's position is changing with respect to you, right? So for you as the observer, the boy is in motion. But if you consider his parents, okay, so let's say you consider his dad who's driving the car, is the boy in motion for the dad? So let's make the dad, the father here, the observer. So is the boy in motion for him? No, okay, because with respect to him, the boy is sitting in the car, right? The distance of the boy is not changing. So hopefully the boy is sitting nicely on his uh, back seat. He's not moving around, sitting like a good boy there and the position is not changing. 
So for the dad, the boy is at, so for, if you consider the dad, the boy is at rest. And if you consider you as the observer, we'll say that the boy is in motion. So for you, the boy is in motion. And for the dad, the boy is at rest. So what does this tell us? That clearly rest or motion is not an absolute thing. It depends on the observer. So this is a very important point in physics for you to understand that rest and motion are relative things. Okay, so this is very important that rest and motion are relative and it's all based on the observer. So yes, some of you are right when you said yes, the boy is moving when you're the observer outside. And those of you who said the boy is not moving, you're also right because if you consider with the people in the car, right? So let's say you're traveling in the car or a bus, then the people around you, they are stationary. They are not moving, right? So please remember this important concept, rest and motion are relative terms. So the boy can be at rest or in motion depending on the observer. Okay, very good guys. So you got that important concept. So now coming back to some of you were saying, right? So I'll ask you once again, we had said initially confidently that uh, the house is at rest and this tree is at rest. But can you tell me are the house and tree, so is the house or is the tree really at rest? What do you think? Yes, I see some of you asking, can you do class 10 live? I'll definitely be taking some live classes for class 10 also and class nine. So definitely there'll be more live classes coming up. So just click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to get notified about more uh, live classes and more videos that we upload. So I see some of you are saying the house is at rest or the uh, tree is at rest, but hold on if you consider this thing, you know that the house and the tree are on the earth, right? So both of them are on the earth. And you know that the earth is revolving, going around the sun, right? And the earth is rotating also. So is the house and earth really at rest? So imagine you're an astronaut and you're looking at your house from outer space. Then clearly you know that the house is moving because for an astronaut, the earth is moving and everything on the earth is moving, right? The house is moving, this tree is moving. So again, see, it's totally relative. So if you look, uh, look at it from an astronaut point of view, so let's say you're the astronaut here who's uh, outside in outer space and then you see the tree or the house on the earth, then clearly they are in motion, right? So yeah, so even if I ask you, are you at rest right now watching this live class? You may say I'm at rest with respect to the chair or the wall in my room. Absolutely. If the wall is the observer, you're at rest. But are you really at rest? No, because the earth is moving. So if somebody is observing you from outer space, right? Like let's say someone is, uh, some satellite is observing you, then you are in motion. So please understand this, that the house uh, being or an object being at rest or in motion is completely relative to the observer. Okay, great. So I hope that answers your doubts. And if you have more doubts, you can put it in the comments below. So now let's quickly go over the different types of motion. So some of you may already be knowing this. So let's try to, because motion is of different types, right? So let's say when the train is moving, what type of motion are that? Is that? Okay. So when a train is moving, what type of motion do we say? So we know that usually if when the track is a straight line, right? Of course the tracks will have bends, but let's say like in this picture, let's say the train is moving on a straight line track. So it's a straight line here. Okay, so very good. I'm seeing some people are saying rectilinear, translatory, linear motion, excellent. So here we can say it's in linear or rectilinear motion, right? Because the uh, train is moving in a straight line, right? So can you see that guys? The, this type of motion for the train is a linear motion. Now let's look at the picture of the swing. So you know that when, this, uh, when somebody sits on the swing, the swing has this kind of motion, right? This kind of to and fro motion. So when you sit on a swing and swing it, it goes to and fro. So what type of motion does this swing have, can you tell me? 
So I see Gunika Patake said oscillatory motion. Excellent. That's the right answer. The right answer is oscillatory motion. So the swing is in is oscillating. So it's in oscillatory motion. Now what about this B here? So can you see the picture of the B? And you know a B goes flies around randomly, right? So what motion is the B in? Very good. Sandeep says random, right? I see someone, uh, Aksa Rind Baloch, he also says random. Very good. So Gotham random, right? So the correct answer is the B is in random motion. So we can categorize because motions are of different types, right? So here you saw a train is moving in a straight line. That's linear motion. Uh, the swing is oscillatory, random motion. There are many other types of motions also, right? So let's look at this one. So what about the car here is shown stationary, but let's say the wheel is rotating when the car is moving, right? So let's say this car is in motion and the wheel is rotating. So what type of motion is the uh, wheel in? So here I'm talking about this wheel, right? So what motion is the circular motion? Okay, usually we don't use the word uh, circular for a wheel. We use the word rotatory. Circular is also fine. You can say circular motion, but circular motion will be more relevant if you consider the any point on the tip of the wheel, right? So the tip of the wheel will be in a circular kind of motion, right? So here we usually use the word rotational motion. But you know that since the wheel rotates, so the uh, wheel of a car rotates and it moves forward, right? The wheel of the car, because when the car moves, it's going in straight line. So this is kind of a mixed motion because let's say it's rotational and linear or translatory, right? So let's say the car is going in a straight line for simplicity. So this is known as a mixed motion because it is both rotational and linear motion. Okay. Not just rotational. Okay. And what type of motion is the earth in? Can you tell me? So let's take a look at the earth. So here's our earth here. And what motion is the earth in? Very good. Rotational motion, right? Uh, somebody says periodic motion. That's also right because earth periodically goes around the sun. So there are many different categories. So we know that the ro earth rotates about, about its axis here, right? So the earth is clearly in a rotational motion and it's also revolving around the sun. So again, earth is a good example of mixed motion, right? Because it is both rotational, right? And you know that it is translatory or it's or it's in circular motion. It's revolving around the sun. So earth is another good example of mixed motion. Okay. So whenever you get these questions in your test, think carefully. Don't just quickly jump to the answer. Analyze the situation. What type of motion you think it's in. Just apply your common sense and see if it fits your definition. Okay. So great. We talked about the different types of motion. Now let's look at this concept. So we know uh, we're going to talk about moving bodies. So how do we define the concept of distance, right? We've all used distance in our daily lives, right? How much distance you've traveled? What's the distance from your home to your school? So what's the physics definition of distance? So distance, as you can see, is given in this definition here. Distance is defined as the total length of the path traveled. Okay. It's the total length of the path that you've traveled. So let's take a example here. So let's say this boy is at A, right? So he's at A and the boy walks like this as shown in the arrow. So you can see the boy walks from A to B, right? Like this for three meters and then from B to C for another four meters as shown here. Okay. So can you tell me what is the total length of the path traveled here? So what, what is the distance traveled by the boy? Because we know that the definition of distance is total length of the paths traveled. So very good. I see a lot of you are saying seven meters. That's correct. So the correct answer here is distance is seven meters. Why? Because three plus four, we are measuring the total length traveled by the boy. So it's clearly seven meters. And what is the unit of distance, right? As you can see from here, the SI unit is meters, but you can also measure. So this, uh, the unit will be meters, the SI unit, uh, centimeters, the CGS unit, right? 
you can have kilometers also right we uh, measure distance conveniently in kilometers when the distance is large so there are many uh, different units of distance right and the si unit but is meters it's not kilometers be clear about that uh, so the total distance traveled here by the boy is seven meters now one important thing about distance in physics is it doesn't have a direction okay so we are going to talk about a quantity which has direction and then we'll compare them so let's look at that so next we'll talk about displacement again let's take the same example let's say the boy is at point a and he travels three meters like this and four meters like this and reaches the point c so finally he's over here so this is the starting position and that's the ending position and now we want to find the displacement of the boy and what is the definition please note the definition so displacement is a more like a physics term right we don't normally say what's your displacement when you travel right so what is the definition it says shortest distance from initial to final position and excellent i see a lot of your answers answering five meters very good some of you are saying five but uh, don't forget to write the unit right so let's see why is it five meters why not seven meters because if you look here carefully the initial position of the boy is a and the final position is c and we want to find the shortest distance right as if we are finding a shortcut from a to c so what is the shortest distance from initial to final position the easiest thing is you just draw a line right so we are going to draw a line from a to c okay so the shortest distance is the displacement so this is our displacement here from a to c and it's this line now how do we figure out the value of that very simple can you see that this is a uh, right angle triangle that's our 90 degree and now you can apply pythagoras theorem right so remember pythagoras theorem this is the hypotenuse okay so the displacement is going to be so our displacement is going to work out to be square root of 3 square plus 4 square right which is equal to 5 meters so very good a lot of you got this answer excellent guys keep it up so 5 meters is the displacement of this boy shortest distance from initial to final okay and again the unit is going to be meters the si unit and similarly you'll have centimeters kilometers as the other unit same as distance but now one very important thing is displacement is a vector quantity okay so i want you to remember that that this guy displacement is a vector quantity what does that mean displacement has direction okay so what is the direction let's understand with an example so let's say we draw our geography directions here right so we know that this is the north this is the south this is the west this is the east okay so what is the direction in this case for the boy moving from a to c so for this example can you tell me what is the direction of the displacement here very good i see uh avdatika tiwari says uh, five meters northeast very good i think that's the correct answer here northeast right any lot of you are writing very good because you can see he's moving towards the northeast direction so the complete answer here is going to be five meters northeast excellent so can you see so our guy distance which i sent it didn't have any direction here so that means it's a scalar quantity something which has only magnitude magnitude means value so you can see the magnitude here seven meters so it has magnitude over here but no direction right so distance is a scalar quantity but displacement as we saw it's a vector quantity because it has both magnitude the five meters and the uh, direction northeast right and you can see five meters is less than seven uh, meters because displacement should always be less than or equal to because it's the shortest distance right so very good but uh, i think someone uh, before this live class uh, i think ranjan had asked me that uh, this question right so can displacement be positive or negative right so we talked about a northeast direction but we if we are considering uh, displacement let's say just along a single line right so if you have a line like this and let's say this is uh, the zero the origin right so any displacement to the right side let's say there was a displacement of three meters here so we can consider that as plus three 
and let's say there's a displacement on the left side that can be considered minus three so this is another way of specifying direction so one you can say according to north south east west or you can say with positive or negative value so positive means to the right of the zero where you're considering and left uh, the negative means it's to the left so it's like forward and backward okay so again remember the key concept what's the key difference distance displacement distance is scalar uh, only magnitude no direction displacement is a vector it has both magnitude and direction okay so excellent i hope you guys have got this important concept and please remember it with the definition now let's move on to the next thing speed okay so i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the formula of speed so speed is defined as the rate of change of distance so its formula is simple formula speed is distance by time okay so i have a question for you guys here so let's say again the boy moved from a to b uh, sorry a to b and then to c and he took two seconds to go from a to b and to c so can you find the speed of this boy okay so i see some of you are saying please have maths class also definitely i'll be taking some live maths classes and uploading maths videos so again uh, we'll be having more live classes so guys uh, do uh, share out this channel with your friends and do attend them and hit the notification bell so that you get notified about these and you don't miss out on the classes okay so thanks a lot for your interest and support i really appreciate it and uh, let's keep studying during this lockdown time utilize your time well because you know once the schools open you'll have more pressure you'll have more studies so do utilize this time so good i'm seeing a lot of answers for the speed you're uh, saying speed is 3.5 meters per second excellent that's the correct answer you guys are great you guys are awesome so the right answer is 3.5 meters per second so how did we get that simple we had calculated the total distance here was seven meters right as we saw three plus four meters and the time is given as two seconds so the time is two seconds so if you divide the two numbers what do we get the speed is going to work out to be 3.5 and very easy to understand the unit meter by second so that's meter per second right so what is the unit of speed meter per second if you forget that just think of the formula distance by time meter per second right and again it can be kilometer per hour but here the si unit remember is meter per second because si unit of distance is meter and time is seconds clear so this is the definition of speed distance by time excellent now let's go ahead and take a look at velocity so what is velocity velocity is defined as displacement by time so it's exactly like speed can you see speed was distance by time now this velocity guy is displacement by time so guys i want you to again try for this question the boy moved from a and then he walked to b and then he went to c right so what is the total distance uh, sorry what is the velocity of the boy so again use the formula displacement by time and please tell me what is the velocity of this boy so someone saying 2.5 someone saying 0 3.5 guys decide what what do you think so simple apply the formula here velocity is going to be displacement by time and remember we had found the displacement is 5 meters right 5 meters northeast so i'm going to substitute that value here so displacement was 5 meters and the time again is same here two seconds right so in our example the time is same so if you do 5 by 2 what do you get here 2.5 meters per second simple just apply the formula nothing great here and some of you who are writing 2.5 don't forget the unit in the test right it's very uh, it's a it's typical silly mistake we do just write the number we forget the unit so please remember unit of velocity just like speed is meter per second because it's displacement which is meter divided by time which is second okay now again the same thing just like these distance and displacement were scalar vector guys same with these guys speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector and that's really easy to remember right s for speed s for scalar v for velocity v for vector very simple right so speed and velocity are also scalar vector pairs that means velocity has a direction 
and excellent. I see uh, you guys are awesome. I see Northeast. Some of you had even written it earlier. So perfect. The correct answer here is going to be 2.5 meters per second Northeast. Why? Because as we saw earlier, our displacement was uh, the shortest distance from initial to final position. And we found this out as 5 meters, right? So the displacement is along this direction and the velocity is also going to be along this direction from initial to final position. Okay, so it's going to be from the initial to this final position. So velocity is 2.5 meters per second northeast. Okay, so I hope the concepts are clear, right? Simple. Can speed be negative? Somebody is asking. No, typically speed is can be zero or uh, positive. Because just as I discussed, displacement can be negative, meaning backwards or in the opposite direction. So same way, velocity can also be positive or negative, where you're not saying northeast, you're just specifying forward, backward direction. So that's another way. But speed is always uh, greater than zero. Okay, so excellent, guys. Uh, I hope the concepts are becoming clear. Now let's talk about a very important concept given in your books called uniform motion. Okay, this is a very important thing. So listen carefully. Uh, uniform motion is when a body travels equal distances in equal intervals of time. Okay, so I know this definition looks a little complicated. Let's uh, understand with a very simple example. So what does this mean is uh, when a body travels equal distances in equal intervals of time. So let's take the time interval uh, as a simple interval of one second. So let's say we are observing the car at these positions here every one second, right? So these are the positions. So this is after, so let's say the time starts zero here. Then after one second, the car was here. Then after one second, it was here. So that would be two seconds. Then this is three seconds, right? So let's say we're observing the car after every one second. So our time interval here is one second, right? Okay, so after every one second. Uh, so that is the in equal intervals of time, right? So I see someone's asking, uh, sir, please discount the course. The course is available, the full course is available at a really big discount. So I'll put the link below. After this session, you can take a look or you can go to my website, manochacademy.com. Uh, we have discount on both our class nine and 10 courses and I hope you find it useful. Okay, so let's go to this uh, concept, uniform motion, right? So uh, we are looking at a body traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time, right? And let's say, so we said, uh, we are observing the car every one second. And let's say the car travels two meters every one second, right? So can you see the distance traveled is two meters. So guys, can you see here that it's traveling equal distances, two meters every one second, okay? Two meters every one second. And so since it's traveling equal distances and equal intervals of time, we say the car is in uniform motion. Very important concept. So here we'll say the car is in uniform motion. Now guys, I have a question for you. Can you tell me what is the speed of this car? So who can tell me here, what is the speed of this car? Someone saying, sir, please uh, come uh, live for the live chapter. I did take a live class for the live chapter. You can watch the recorded session and I'll be doing some more class 10 live sessions also. Okay, so please go ahead and try this question. What is the speed of this car? one meter per second, three, two meter per second, somebody is saying zero meter per second. Look here carefully, clearly the car is in motion, so it can't be zero, right? The car is moving. So car is traveling in a straight line like that, okay? And uh, how do we find one meter per second, three? So uh, what was the formula for uh, this thing? Remember speed is distance divided by time, okay? So what is the distance here? So let's say we'll just take it in the first second, suppose. So the distance is two meters traveled in the first second divided by the time, which is one second. So clearly, can you see the speed is simple? Two meters per second. Excellent. I see a lot of answers. Two meters per second. Somebody's written eight meter per second. No, it's two meter per second. Why? Because if we, uh, we are just looking at the speed, let's say in the first second. So from here to here, two meter per second. 
Now, if you look at the next second also, again, same thing, the car travels two meter in one second because from one second to two second means in a one second interval. So again, it's two meter per second. Again, it's two meter per second, right? So can you see the speed of the car is two meter per second every second. This means that the speed is constant and in uniform motion, that's a very important thing. Please remember uniform motion, constant speed because you're traveling equal distance in equal interval of time, right? So every, uh, the speed will be constant, two meter per second here. Okay, is that clear? So very important concept. Now, what will be the velocity of this car? So what do you think is the velocity here? So guys, speed is two meter per second, excellent. And what do you think is the velocity of this car? Come on, I want all of you to try. What is the velocity of this car? Two meter per second, very good. So the answer is going to be the same. And here you can give a direction for this, right? So the velocity is going to be two meter per second, as you can see here. Same thing, because the displacement along this straight line, the car is traveling two meters every one second. Since it's going on a straight line, the displacement is the same as distance, right? And here, if you want to give a direction or we can say, suppose we consider the right side as, so we can say plus two meter per second. Okay, clear? So very good. So this is uniform motion. That means constant speed. And also remember sometimes when we talk strictly speaking, it also means constant velocity. So let's say the car is traveling in a same direction also. So uniform motion, please look carefully in your book. Some books just casually say constant speed, but the strict definition is constant velocity means the speed is constant and the direction is constant means the body is moving in a straight line. So the body is going in a straight line. Okay. Now the opposite of uniform motion, as you can expect is non-uniform motion, right? And what is the definition? When a body travels unequal distances in equal intervals of time. So again, the time interval is same. So let's say the time starts here. So let's say the time is zero second here. Okay. Once after one second, the car is here at two seconds, the car is here. And then at three seconds, the car is here. Okay. So let's say uh, in this uh, first second, the car travel, let's say travel a distance of one meter here. Okay. And in this second, let's say travel the total distance of five meters. And here, as you can see, it traveled three meters. So can you see every second when we are looking at the car in equal inter interval of time, the car is traveling unequal distances. Why? Because in the first second, if you see here, can you see in the first second, the car traveled only one meter, but in the next one second. So in the next from one second to two second, it traveled five meter. And then from two second to three second, it traveled three meters. So can you see it's traveling unequal distances in equal intervals of time, not unequal distances in unequal intervals of time. Time interval is kept equal to make it convenient. So unequal distances in equal intervals of time. Clear? And now if you look here, the speed of the car, let's take a look. What's the speed of the car in the first second? Can you see it traveled one meter in one second? So it's going to be, what is it going to be here? One meter per second. Then the speed, so I'll write it here. So the speed in the first second is one meter per second. Then the speed in the second second is five meter per second because it traveled five meter in one second from one to two seconds, clear? And then in the third uh, second, if you look, the speed is three meter per second, simple, right? So can you see the speed went from one, then five and three meter per second. Similarly, if we do the same thing for velocity, it's gonna be one meter per second. And if you are saying this is the positive direction, so plus, plus five meter per second here, or plus three meter per second. Many times you can ignore the direction and just write the value. So can you see here, right? So those are the values. So one meter per second, five, three meter per second, right? And can you see that in both these cases, in non-uniform motion, the speed or the velocity is basically not constant. Right? Can you see that guys? So the speed is not constant. The velocity is not constant, right? So very important concept for you to understand that here 
in non uniform motion normally the strictly speaking velocity is not constant which means either the value is changing or the direction is changing so please guys remember this i've explained to you with a very simple example many students get confused in uniform non uniform motion so go back and revise these two things uniform motion and non uniform motion right so now one question is how do you describe the speed of this car if the speed of the car keeps changing all the time like 1 meter per second 5 3 and you know that's a practical scenario right so when uh, when you are in a car or you are in a bus you know that the car or bus is not moving at a constant speed right maybe now during this lockdown you know the roads are empty and if really a police car is traveling then maybe it can move at a constant speed because the road is clear but normally you know at a uh, signal you stop then again the car starts it goes fast it goes slow so those are all cases of non uniform motion so an interesting question is how do you describe the speed or velocity of the car okay very good i see somebody has written average speed right so average speed is the correct concept here because average speed is used for non uniform motion right so when a thing is moving at uniform motion or constant velocity we can talk about speed or velocity because it's constant but when it's changing all the time then it's going to be average speed so guys can you try here so what was our case here so when the car traveled from 0 uh this 1 second 2 second 3 second and remember in our picture the car had traveled 1 uh, meter here 5 meters here and then 3 meters here right so can you find using this formula average speed which means total distance by total time can you find the average speed of this car for me so i want all of you to try what will be the average speed of this car so just use the formula right average speed is total distance by total time Now what is the total distance? One plus five plus three meter, right? Can you see? And what is the total time? Three seconds. So what's it going to work out to be? Nine by three, and that's going to be three meter per second. Excellent! I see a lot of answers, guys. Awesome! I'm very happy you're getting the concepts. These are very important concepts. So here for non-uniform motion, we are using average speed, and can you see that the average speed is going to be three meter per second here? and it doesn't make sense you can talk about speed but then it will be you know speed in the first second speed in the second second speed in the third second it gets complicated so here we talk about average speed it makes sense to uh, get an average over the distance traveled and the uh, formula is very simple just like speed is distance by time average speed is total distance by total time and again the unit is going to be meter per second excellent guys you guys rock uh, very good you are understanding the concepts now let's take a look at average velocity just like you saw average speed was total distance by total time so again in non uniform motion we can use average velocity and that's going to be total displacement by total time can you see that formula so again please apply it here what will it be so here the car traveled zero it started at zero 1 second 2 second 3 second and as we saw the car moved 1 meter here then it moved for 5 meters and then here it moved for uh, oh sorry this was the other picture so i'll just go back to that this is for the next point uh, my mistake here so we'll go back to this again to this picture so uh, what was it what will the average velocity be based on this picture it's going to be the same thing right 3 meters per second excellent you guys got the right answer uh, so the average velocity based on that formula so this formula i'm talking about total displacement by total time is going to be so total displacement by total time and you can see the average uh, velocity is again going to be 3 meter per second and if you want to give a direction we can say plus 3 or based on the direction given in the question if the direction is given excellent right now i'm going to talk about one very important thing we saw this formula of average velocity similar to average speed is total displacement by total time but if the velocity is changing at a uniform rate there is a second very important formula for average velocity here can you see the second formula u plus v by 2 so please take a look here so this formula i'm talking about right here u plus v by 2 so let me explain you the meaning of that so average velocity guys remember has two important formulas uh, 
total displacement by total time. We can also actually say the same uh, thing for average speed, also the uh, lower formula, but normally we say for average velocity. So let's take a look. So average velocity can be total displacement by total time. That's simple, just like the average speed, but it can also be defined as u plus v by two. Now, what does this mean? Let me explain you. So what does this formula mean here? So u basically means initial velocity. So the velocity at the start. and v is the final velocity okay so guys and when can we apply this formula when if the velocity is changing at a uniform rate so very important condition guys here if the velocity is changing at a uniform rate then you can apply this second formula otherwise you have to use the first general formula so remember this first formula is the general formula here so this is our general formula and this is our special formula here. This second case is the special one. So first general formula, you can apply total displacement by total time anywhere without uh, worrying about it. But if it's given that if the velocity is changing at a uniform rate, then you can simply do a average of the initial and final velocity. Okay, so let's understand what does that mean with an example. So you can take an average of the initial and final. So there you don't have to worry by time. You can just do by two. So let's understand with an example. So let's say when the uh, time started, let's say the car had, uh, didn't start moving. So let's say the speed or the velocity was zero meter per second. Now let's say after one second, the car's speed was one meter per second. Then after two seconds, it was two meter per second. And after three seconds, three meter per second. Okay. So can you see that the speed of the car is changing at a uniform rate? every one second how much is it increasing by one meter per second can you guys see that very simple it's going from zero to one to two to three so it is increasing it could have been decreasing also but here it's increasing at a uniform rate right so now can you apply the formula so what will be the average velocity of the car for this case okay so based on this formula what will the average velocity be so this is a new example where I said the car is moving uh, over here and it's given that the initial velocity. So this is our initial velocity is zero. Okay. And the final velocity when the time ended is three. Okay. Oops. You guys can't see that because I'm there. Uh, so let me write that again. So this is the final velocity. Okay, final velocity, this is V and this guy is U. So what is the average velocity you're going to work out to be? Very simple. So average velocity is going to be U plus V by two, right? So that's going to be zero plus three by two. Very good. I see a lot of answers there. 1.5, excellent guys. So the answer is 1.5. So please rem remember this many times it comes in the tests where you can see no time is given. You're just given velocities and it says find the average and you, you can only apply. So please write the condition. You can only apply this formula if the velocity is changing at a uniform rate. Please remember this very, very important point. And otherwise you can always apply that general formula. Clear? Excellent. Okay. Now let's look at an interesting example. So we've talked about all these theories, distance, displacement, speed, velocity. I'm confident you guys are now clear of the concept. Now let's talk some practical things, right? So let's say this car is moving from this point here, right? So let's say the car is at this position. Can you see over here, guys? So the car is at this position A. And let's say it's finally at this position B. And let's say the car went like this, okay? So I'm going to draw the path of the car here. So I'm going to show you the path of the car. So let's say the car went along this blue line. So the car went like this, like this, like this, and it landed up here. Okay. So how do you practically measure the distance traveled by the car? Okay. So how will you measure the distance traveled by the car? Okay, guys. So please take a look. How do you measure the distance traveled by this car? 
So uh, distance, remember, is the total length of the paths traveled. So how do we do that? What do you guys think? Uh, so let's say you're in a vehicle or a car. We can't practically go and put a tape along the road and measure it, right? Or a rope. That's not uh, practical. So how do you measure the distance? We are going to use some instruments. So this is a panel of a car. So do you know what instrument will you use to measure the total distance traveled by the car? Yes, guys, tell me. So based on uh, this thing, how will you find the total distance traveled by the car? Odometer, excellent. I see uh, Pankaj uh, gave the answer, right? So the answer is you're going to use a odometer. And can you see the odometer is here? So that's our odometer here. And odometer measures the distance traveled by the car. So can you see in this card, the odometer reads 10180 kilometers. And let's say the uh, after the end of the trip, so let's say this was the reading at A, and then when the car finished the trip, the reading is 10190 kilometers. Okay, so what is the total distance traveled by the car, guys? So can you tell me? So the car was at point A, the odometer reading was 10180 kilometers, and so what do you think is the total distance traveled by the car? Excellent, a uh, lot of you are getting uh, the correct answer, yes, so you use practically use a odometer to measure the distance traveled because you can't measure it with a rope or a tape, right? So you just subtract these two readings. And so in this case, uh, as you can see, if you subtract those two, you'll get 10 kilometers. So here we can say that the distance traveled by this car along that blue line is 10 kilometers. Excellent. So that's how we practically measure it using this odometer instrument. Can you see it measures it in kilometers. Can you see that instrument over there? So it measures the distance traveled. Now can you guys tell me how will you measure the displacement of this car? Okay, how are you going to measure the displacement? So displacement guys remember is the shortest distance from initial to the final position. So I'm showing it with this purple line, right? So that is our displacement here. Right? Remember the blue line was the distance. And this purple line is the displacement. So guys, how do you measure practically the displacement? Let's say this car went from A to B on this map. How are you guys going to measure it? So think about it, guys. Speedometer, no. Speedometer measures speed, right? How do we measure the displacement? Srinivas says map scale. Excellent. That's the right answer, you know. So uh, ARG math also says map scale, topography, uh, Ost Vinayak says that superb. So yes, here you need to apply some geography. You need to use a map. So like you've seen many maps have this thing, right? They have a legend on the map saying uh, one centimeter equals one kilometer or something. So let's say we measured uh, this uh, distance from A to B. Let's say it turned out to be seven centimeters. So the total displacement is going to be, how much do we get there? the total displacement is going to work out to be seven kilometers because one centimeter is one kilometer. So here basically you need to use a map. You can use even Google Maps or you can uh, use a real uh, paper map, but you need to measure that distance along the straight line because displacement is simple. It's that straight line from initial to final position. Okay, excellent. That's how you guys measure, practically measure displacement. Okay. And now, how do you find the speed of this vehicle? So clearly when this car moved, was it in uniform motion or non-uniform motion? What do you guys think? So what do you guys think here will be the car was in uniform motion or non-uniform motion? So the car here is in non-uniform motion, right? Because the speed of the car, when it practically travels, you know, it keeps changing. So clearly this vehicle normally when it travels, a car travels, it's in non-uniform motion. So here we can talk about, we won't talk about speed, we'll talk about average speed, right? So average speed. And what is average speed going to be? Total distance by total time. So total distance we have here divided by the total time. 
right? So that's how we are going to calculate. And let's say this, uh, uh, the total distance given here was, we found out it's 10 kilometers. And let's say we are given that the total time taken is half an hour. So 0.5 hours, right? Oh, that's not visible. I'll write it again. So the total distance is 10 kilometers. And let's say the total time was 0.5 hours. So what is the average speed going to be guys here? So what do you think is the average speed based on the formula? Very simple, total distance by total time. So just apply that formula. And so we are going to get the average speed as 20 kilometers per hour, right? So if you work it out, it's going to be 20 kilometers per hour. That's our average speed here, right? I'll write it again here. So average speed is going to be 20 kilometers per hour. Pretty simple. So apply the formula. And now guys, can you calculate for me what is going to be the average velocity? Because it's a non-uniform motion. So we won't apply. It's not at constant velocity. We need to find average velocity. So guys, can you calculate for me what is the average velocity of this car? So based on what we know, total displacement by total time, right? So the total displacement is seven kilometers and the total time is going to be the same 0.5 hours, right? So what is going to be the average velocity of this car? Very good. I see a lot of answers here. So it's going to be 14 kilometers per hour. Okay. Here we are not using the SI unit. That's fine. We can also use uh, not meter per second, it's kilometers per hour, right? So 40, uh, 7 by 0.5 is 14. And yes, we can say it's in the northeast direction. We can give it a direction here also, right? Because it's roughly from A to B. You can see the direction here is northeast. So if you look at this, it's going in the northeast direction. So from A to B. Clear? So this is how you practically measure it. So here, can you see that we used uh, the odometer? One question is, why didn't we use the speedometer here? So you guys know, uh, let me erase this odometer thing here. So you guys know that here was our odometer. So this thing was our odometer here. And we have this thing called speedometer, right? This is a tachometer which measures the rotation speed. I'm not going to talk about that. You know that speedometer measures the speed of the car. So guys, why didn't we use speedometer? Why did we use this formula here. So who can tell me why uh, speedometer is not very helpful for us to find the average speed of the car? Uh, so please think we wanted average speed here, but we use the formula total distance by total time. Total distance was measured using the odometer. We didn't use speedometer because one very important, excellent, I see uh, the gaming and unboxing Guruji has told the correct answer. The speedometer measures instantaneous speed. Excellent. That's the right answer. What does that mean? Speedometer measures instantaneous speed, the speed at a particular instant. So at that time, but we wanted since the car was in non-uniform motion, its speed is changing all the time. So we wanted to find the average speed here. Please understand the concept. Instantaneous speed means a speed at a particular instant, but we wanted to find the overall, the average speed in this travel. And so the average speed worked out according to the formula as 20 kilometers per hour. We didn't want speed at every instant. So these are very important things, guys, here. Yes, very good. Speed is not constant. That's why we used, we didn't use the speedometer. But if at a particular instant you want to know, then you don't have to do any calculation. You can see the speedometer of the car. So guys, next time when you're uh, uh, in a vehicle, in a bus, in a car, I want you to think of these practical things and apply the concepts that you've learned. Then you'll have the real fun of physics. Don't just use your textbook or just be restricted to your book. Apply these concepts practically. Then you'll absorb the concepts better. Excellent. Now I want you guys to try this question. I have an interesting question for you. A boy goes from home to school, right? So let's say this is his home here. So this is the home. And this boy travels from his home to school and back. And let's say this is the school here. Okay. So this is the school building. And here's the boy. And he travels first from home to school. And then he comes back. And let's say the school is two kilometers from his home. So you should always draw a nice diagram. Find the distance and displacement when he returns from home. 
So I want you guys to find two things. So first thing we want to find is what is the distance traveled by the boy, right? So what is his distance and then what is his displacement? So I want two answers here. So go, guys, it's a simple question. Go ahead and use the concepts here, right? Excellent. I see a lot of you are answering the right answer. Four kilometers is the correct uh, answer for distance. Why? Because two plus two, the boy went from home to school, two kilometers and then back. So two plus two, four kilometers is the distance. Simple. Now, what is the displacement traveled by the boy? So what do you guys think is the displacement? Excellent. I see a lot of people have written the correct answer. Zero kilometers. Now, why is that? Because can you see this is the initial position of the boy? And then when he travels like this and then again, he comes back. This is also his final position. So what is the shortest distance from initial to final position? What's the shortest distance? Because he's back at the same place. The shortest distance is going to be zero because he's back to his original position. So remember, when a body moves, distance can never be zero, but displacement can be zero. Excellent, guys. I see a lot of you are getting the concepts right. If you got it wrong, doesn't matter. Learn it. You know, it's best to learn when you get it wrong, then you'll remember it well. So please uh, understand this important concept. Distance is four kilometers and displacement is zero kilometers. OK, great. And now I have one homework question for you. OK, so I want you guys to take a look at this question. A man is walking on a circular track of radius seven meters. He takes one minute to complete half the circle. Find his speed and velocity. And just like you saw in the previous question, you know, I drew a diagram and visualized it. I want you guys to do the same thing. So I'm not going to solve this in the live class. I want you to try it yourself and let me know the answers by put your answers in the comments below. So guys, I want you to try this question and go ahead and write your answers. So go ahead and write your answers in the comments. Once the live class is over, Please go ahead and write your answers in the comments below. And I want to see how you solve this question, right? So we want to find his speed and velocity. Okay. So my hint is please draw a diagram of the question, understand it. Uh, it's a little more uh, complicated, you know, so find his speed and velocity and please put your answers in the comments below. And I'm looking forward to reading your comments and replying to you. Okay. So you can try this as a homework question. OK, guys. And so I have a lot of videos on the motion chapter. You can watch uh, videos like uh, on distance, displacement, speed and velocity, where actually I show you these things like speedometer, odometer. I know some of you have already seen these videos. There's a video on acceleration, right? And there's this very important topic, equations of motion. So guys, do check out these videos. I have more videos on my website, manochaacademy.com. So please take a look at these videos uh, before we do the next live class. So your homework is going to be to try uh, to go ahead and watch these videos and to try this question, right? So this is your homework question and write your answers in the comments below and go ahead and watch these videos on my Manocha Academy channel. And you'll also find it on my website, manochaacademy.com. Okay. And as I said, I'm super excited to let you know that just yesterday I launched the physics CBSE class nine full course uh, for you. Uh, where you'll have interactive videos, quizzes and questions, and we'll be adding more awesome content to that course. And you'll be getting uh, uh, replies from me on your doubts. So go ahead and sign up for this course. There's a huge discount out there. I'll put the link below and you can also check out my class 10 full course for physics. So guys, thanks a lot for your support. Uh, I see some of you already answering that question, but go ahead and draw a diagram. Think carefully. So it's really amazing uh, uh, to have all of you on the live class and you guys uh, watch the videos and it's absolutely awesome to read your comments. So thanks a lot for your support and uh, I hope all of you stay safe and uh, praying for everyone's good health. So please utilize this time in studying and doing your best. Do enjoy yourself also, but at the same time, study, stay motivated because, you know, learning is an endless journey. It's a fantastic journey that you should have and enjoy your uh, 
teaching and thanks i see a lot of interest for the live classes definitely i'll be taking more live classes so guys please hit the like button if you haven't already and share out this video with your friends if you found it useful and uh, do hit that notification bell and subscribe button uh, for my channel so that you get notified about these new videos uh, okay and also our live sessions i'll definitely try to take more live sessions i'll definitely do that for physics chemistry and math sessions are also coming up so hope you guys find it useful i'll take it for both class 9 and 10. all right guys uh, thanks a lot uh, hope you enjoyed the session and you found it useful i really enjoyed it because you guys were very interactive you were answering the questions and really participating so it's uh, it was really an awesome session for me uh, thanks a lot so i'll be signing off here all right guys bye bye all the best thanks for watching and do check out our website manochaacademy.com and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks.